YouTube boys, welcome back. A uh, new kind of video, well not really a new kind of video, but a very requested video today. Uh, question gets asked a lot on my TikTok lives, just on TikTok in general, sometimes in the comments on YouTube. And it's really just how I do my Juggernaut Trike Strip because everyone does it a little different. Why I do the little spin and then I'm going to combine in my wheel settings. Uh, just kind of give a rundown on why I have my wheel settings set the way I do. So yeah, I kind of just want to explain. So I'm heading over to the drag strip right now. Um, how I maneuver the wheel, why I turn the way I do at the beginning of the juggernaut drag strip. I don't know. I feel like this could be an interesting topic. I obviously do this race a lot. It's, in my opinion, the most famous Forza Horizon 4 race. Um, obviously it's done very good things for me and I'm grateful so without further ado I'm just gonna hop in and we're not gonna actually complete the race but I'm gonna kind of slowly walk through uh, what I do at the beginning of the race and then I, I'm gonna go up to the curve because the curve is another important part and just kind of explain if you want to make these similar videos uh, you're more than welcome to and I'm just gonna show you guys how I do it so obviously the first thing I need to do is make sure that I'm in the car while I use and I don't like doing the races in winter so what I'll do in winter time is I'll actually look at the classic cars so this is a retro sports and then I'll create a blueprint for that in autumn for retro sports and then I can use that car and it's not winter out not slippery that's just a little fun trick that I do so anyways let's hop into the Supra here uh, and I'm gonna wait for the cars to go and I'm kind of slowly walk through why so obviously I put it on easy difficulty because I'm not trying to show how good I am I'm just trying to entertain uh, let you guys have a little fun you guys like watching them it allows you to request a car for me to do so that's the biggest reason I do these because it's a good way for me to involve you guys and you seem to enjoy them so first and foremost obviously what I do I start in first gear uh, and start the race and then generally around this point I will put into reverse and when I used to do these videos on a controller I'd go back this way um, to the left which can work, but the reason I don't do it anymore is you can very fluidly in one motion do um, a big swoop if you go to the right. So I'll show you again why I go to the right. So if I go into reverse and I spin the wheel around the other way, then I'm already kicking out to the right hand side here so that I can drift all the way around the outside like that. And then I stick around here. We'll drive up the race and I'll show you guys. I stick around the right hand side of the map here for a few reasons. Um, there's more turns where you're on the inside lane on this outside of the map actually. So in general, when you join this drag strip online, if you're on the outside, you already have an advantage. So here's one uh, right here where you're on the inside and that's a big turn. People don't really realize it, but you can save a lot of time there. Uh, and then this one coming up is the biggest one. I'm going to kind of show you how I line up for it. So obviously each car is different. Some you can go around full speed. Um, but for the most part, you kind of want to come in on a steep angle so you can cut straight across and turn as little as possible. So I'm going to rewind. Oh, don't know if I'm going to rewind that, but I will drive back so I can show you guys again kind of what I mean. Because that's a, an important bit. You have to get the feel and it's not every it's not first try with every single car But I'll kind of show you guys one more time um, Some cars just have more traction than others So the Ferrari 599 XX Evolution goes around that corner really nicely. I'm just gonna cut through the rails here So I'll show you very slowly so right around here is where I'll just let off the gas and maybe I'll downshift into fifth if I'm in sixth gear so I can come as close to this edge as possible and straighten out and just kind of go straight across the curve here. And from here on out, it's pretty straight. People also underestimate how tight this corner is. Just do very slow turn around there, maybe feather the gas, and then you're off to the races. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys what this looks like in full time. So I'm gonna restart the race uh, and see if you can pick out those things that I was explaining to you. I'm gonna mute my mic so I can just show you guys and then possibly recover the wheel settings right after this. So I'm gonna mute my mic, do the race so you guys can see kind of how it looks like in real time.
Okay, so that wasn't my cleanest race ever, but but it did a good job on um, displaying to you guys that it, that drift you do get comfortable doing it. And not every single one's the same, but you understand generally how much gas to use, how much to turn the wheel. And I'm going to show you guys my settings. So if you plan controller, it's a little bit easier because you have more maneuverability, moving your thumb back and forth. It's easier to learn. Um, but the options still out there on the control on the wheel and I'm gonna sh again show my wheel settings. So I'll probably title this some sort of wheel setting video because I have updated them quite a bit um, Since the last video. So yeah, again, it doesn't really matter what car you use You do get comfortable knowing when to give a little more gas when to use the e-brake and then yeah Just where to steer and then before you know it, you're kind of doing it first try with every single vehicle so again, happy I was able to show you that and I'm gonna kind of dive into my wheel settings now. Like I had said before, I have covered these in the past, but it's been a little while and they've changed quite a bit. So we're gonna take a peek at those. And lots of the top settings haven't really changed. So the vibration I keep on and obviously I don't invert or anything. These settings have all stayed the same. So I'll go very slow and I don't know what some of them do, but I have a good idea about most. So I keep my dead zone at zero because my wheel doesn't have any wheel drift. Uh, it's still pretty brand new, but if you notice that your car, when your wheel straight like this kind of goes off, bump that up and just play around with it until you realize that the cars aren't doing that anymore. Steering linearity, leave this at 50. Lots of these are default settings that come with the wheel, so you can kind of not worry too much about them. Force feedback, this is a big one. Um, this one's definitely left up to your preference because it, it just it's just whatever's comfortable for you. I wouldn't recommend going below a 10. Uh, you might find yourself oversteering quite a bit. Um, but in general, anywhere from 10 to 50 is a comfortable force feedback. If you're a psycho, you can do full, <laughs> uh, but you won't, you won't get me doing that. Uh, vibration scale down to zero centering. This is just kind of how fast. So if I have the wheel over here, it's how fast it comes back to their side. I might turn this up. I've been playing around with this a lot. Currently I have it at 65. It's all right for me. Uh, but I'm also changing my wheel rotation angle and I'm going to dive into that in a second here quite a bit. So these are two big things when you're getting into drifting, you really have to focus on. So for now I have mine at 65 wheel damper. I think that's just an accident. I normally have that at zero. I think understeer 100 minimum force 100. And now let's talk about the wheel rotation. Um, currently mine's set at 630 and a couple weeks ago, I had it all the way down at 270. Uh, on Car X Drift, I drift at 270 because you don't have to worry about spinning the wheel. You're a lot more in control when you can go from here all the way over to here and your car does a full spin. It's a lot quicker, a lot smoother, and I found it a lot easier to learn how to not only drive and like understand pedal control, which, if, which I'll talk about in another second here because that's also very important when simulation driving. Um, I just found it easier to learn all those things without having to worry about how far has my wheel spun and all these other things. So I kept it low and I've slowly been bumping that up. Um, probably I'll be at 720 around sometime this weekend and you get comfortable. I, I found that around the 400 mark, it was very easy to keep increasing that slowly. And it, from about 270 to 400, it was a big jump and it took a couple weeks to get used to that. But now when I'm slowly increasing it, it's very easy to get used to. So if you're just starting, keep it low. There's really not any shame in it. Uh, it's just, it's a video game. So play the video game in whatever way is fun for you. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be Gooseyest who's absolutely insane and can have 900 degree rotation. He's awesome and unbelievable at the game, but you don't have to be that. You can just have fun. So 270 degree, that's what I recommend if you're starting. Uh, the Ferrari 458 steering wheel, that is what it's set to. It has a bungee system and only turns 270 degrees. So anyways, mine's currently 630. Um, I'll roll some footage at the end here after I'm done of me drifting the needle climb on, two, on 630 so you can see what that looks like. Um, and then pedal control. This is a big one. When people start simulation drifting, they want to have the pedal down all the way, all the time. And I was the same way. It was only like a month and a bit ago that I started actually like gradually using more pedal, taking it off and filtering in the brake. The brake is so important when drifting and driving. But again, on the Logitech, it's a little stiff. So these are all things that you are gonna get comfortable with when your real wheel rotation is down to 270 and they really helped me. Anyways, this might've been an excessive video. I'm gonna show you guys that drifting now. Like, comment, subscribe if you found any part of it helpful. It's very different from what I normally do, but hopefully it helped somebody out. Again, these are my settings. I'll show you guys the uh, button layout. 
quickly. I actually have my e-brake set to my clutch on my wheel there, RSL. Um, so I'll show you these really quickly and then yeah, I'm just gonna cut to when I'm on the needle climb so you can see what 630 degree rotation looks like. Thanks for watching, love you all, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.